Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. It's going to be an unboxing and review for this Robot Damashi Side MS, the Robot Spirits, long ass name, Full Armor Gundam version anime. Yeah, so I've never had a Robot Spirits, Robot Damashi kit before and I thought I'll just uh, buy it and try it. <laughs> You guys aren't sick of that yet, are you? Uh, so yeah, so this is the version anime. I've really liked the look of these version anime things. Of course, the thing is for me is just I just prefer to build stuff myself. So these these figures aren't cheap, and they're usually around like fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, depending on what you get. Uh, can be more or less depending on the version, but that seems to be kind of generally the average. I think this was around fifty for this one. It was on sale, so maybe it was a little bit cheaper. Than that, uh, I think it was around 40 maybe for this, so still not that cheap. And as you can see from this box, not that incredibly large either. So you gotta, gonna kind of have to really like these. But again, like I said, I think these version anime ones do look really cool, so I'll check it out anyway, see how it is. Hopefully, I don't get like addicted to these because, like I said, they are expensive. But really cool box art here for this. This is a MSV design, so. Of course, I really like this. And so if you saw my recent Gunplay Delivery video where I got this, I mentioned that I also got this here, because I ordered this from, uh, again, Hobby Link Japan. They had a, these on sale. So I took the opportunity to pick one up. And one of the things that was included for the sale was that you also get a stand. So they had two different stands, one EFSF version and one Xeon version. It, and they said on the website, very plainly that it is random, so you just get one and it's just random whichever one you get. Now, not all of the mobile suits that, are, that were in the sale were like from Universal Century, so some of them were from other series where obviously uh, neither the EFSF version or the Xeon version, neither of them would be correct for the mobile suit that you were getting that with. But in this case, with this being very plainly a UC Gundam EFSF Gundam, I would have thought that that would have been pretty obvious to, you know, whoever is packing the boxes, because I'm sure that they don't pack the boxes using robots or something. I'm sure these are actually packed by people, and I think it would have been easy enough to just say, oh, it's a Gundam, give a Gundam base. I mean, <laughs> I even took a little jab at uh, HLJ there on Twitter, and they responded with basically a very robotic response there. So, yes, I understand that they were packed uh, just randomly, but, I mean, come on, like... It uh, doesn't take too much sense to realize that uh, having the other one would be kind of nice. So anyway, I'll take a look at the stand as well, but let's get this guy open. Let's take a look around the box here first. So on the side, just a nice shot of what the figure is going to look like there. Although the proportions and design or everything is really nice, it does look a little bit plain without any like panel lining or decals or anything on there. Here on the top, just again, uh, full armor Gundam. Here on the side, there's some detail shots what the Gundam looks like without all the extra stuff on it. We'd also have some really cool effect parts included in here. Effect parts there for the bazooka, beam effect parts, uh, Vulcan effect parts looks like for the head as well. That looks pretty cool. And then these effect parts to show like the missiles shooting out of the knees and the shoulders, which is really cool. So here on the back, a whole bunch of stuff here. The RX-78 in the full armor colors there, white, green, and yellow. And then with all the armor on, and then just some of the gimmicks here, neck stuff, uh, missile pods opening, and things like that. And then here, where we normally have the list price, uh, I guess they don't print the list price on these? I don't know. Again, this is my first time having one of these, so I don't really know. Looking around the box, I don't know, but at least I will point this out as well. This is 2017, so this has just come out this year. This isn't an old, older one or anything. So let's pull this out. And there we go, we've got one tray, two trays of stuff. So here's basically the, the Gundam and all the armor panels and everything. And then all of the accessories and effect parts and everything here on in this tray. So a lot of parts. I like it so far. It looks to be about the size of a 144 scale kit, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, when we get that out of there, here's just an advertisement for other Robodamashi MSV designs. So like, I really like these all a lot. <laughs> so especially the Desert Type Zaku, and this one I believe was the Prototype Goof. Uh, these are just really cool. So again, if I end up really loving this, may try to sort out some of those as well. Those were P Bandai's though. I, I guess I should point out these were all P Bandai items, I believe. All of these were unfortunately. We do have an instruction sheet here. Uh, should be pretty straightforward, but I guess this does just show you kind of where all the different parts go, how everything goes together, how to 
connect the effect parts and things like that. I think it should be pretty self-explanatory, but let me get this stuff opened up and we'll find out. So let's just pull out the Gundam here first. Now the Gundam just as it is looking a little bit derpy. That head looks a little bit too big for the body, but I think once we have all the armor and everything on there, it's gonna look a little bit more proportional. And as you can see, we do have some pre-painting here on the head. Looks like the orange and the gray there for the V-fin is painted. The eyes are painted in gold, red there for the camera. I think the chin piece maybe also pre-painted as well. So on the head, there's some pre-painting black here in the vents as well. It looks like for the most part, the rest of this, not really much in the way of pre-painting except maybe the V there on the cross or on the crotch. And that's pretty much it. The rest of this is all just molded. I think maybe red there for the camera on the back of the head as well. But let's take a look at some of the articulation while we're here. So it looks like the chest cockpit, this part opens up or no? Maybe that's for something else, but that's kind of like opening there. Don't really know why. Well, let's just keep that closed for now, I guess, until I figure that out. Uh, the head will go up very far to there. Well, that's a very interesting joint there. Oh, this there on the back of the head, that uh, part there on the back of the head kind of like collapses in well it doesn't it just like stays stationary there and the head kind of moves around that so that's really interesting kind of wish that they would do something like that something like that for high grade kits looks like here on the backpack the where you would normally plug in the uh, beam saber handles you can actually fold uh, that part up a little bit so that will move up and down there in this stomach section i don't know if this uh, part on the chest that's moving helps with the articulation well there we go you can find the limit of that really fast doesn't look like there's a whole lot of articulation here in the stomach. It does kind of move around a little bit, but not too much. There is rotation, of course. The skirts move fine on their own. You can see there's some nice detail there inside. Side skirts also move a little bit, but not too much. Back skirts don't move at all. The shoulders will only go out to about there, it seems. There's no other joint to allow the shoulders to go up any higher than that, it looks like and the shoulder armor just kind of rotates along with that rotation there at the top of the arm double joint there in the arm and it looks like there's rotation here as well in the forearm which is kind of interesting but that also rotates around and then the wrist is just on ball joints and then we have some nice 80s style looking hands on there which look to be holding hands i think we do have some other hand options in there though so we'll take a look at that in a minute down here in the waist it's gonna be kind of hard to see but that hip is actually on a swinging joint so you can actually swing that hip joint forward and back which is pretty nice you can rotate there at the top of the leg bring that forward get a really nice full bend there in the knee with some nice uh, knee armor separation there a nice full 180 degree bend there at the knee that's really good you can bring the legs out all the way no problems there back are only going to be able to go back that far though because of the back skirt the ankle armor is actually connected on a ball joint on the inside here so you can see it's connected just on the one side there on that ball joint so that, that will allow this to kind of move around float around a little bit on that the ankle joint will move very far side to side forward and back no problems there underneath the feet some nice detail all around so overall the articulation does seem really nice comparable to probably the HGUC Revive RX-782 Gundam so let's take a look at that for a quick size comparison, here he is compared with the HGUC Revive RX-782 Gundam. You can see they're very, very similar in size. This is basically 144 scale. And you can see what I'm talking about, about the head. You can see the head on the Revive quite a bit smaller than the big bubble head on this kit. So again, I think once we add all the armor and everything, that will look better. But it's a quite obvious difference here when you see the two of them side by side. All right, so here it is with all the armor on. The armor was pretty simple to put on there. It doesn't really require too much I think one thing that it does do is it uh, stops you from using some of the accessories so one thing that I just didn't really think about what I should probably should have shown you before putting all the stuff on there all the extra armor is that uh, quite a few of the accessories are actually stuff that are pretty much just for like the Gundam to use without all the extra armor on there so it's just like the regular RX-782 is kind of accessories I'll show you those in just a second but overall I think the kit is looking much better in terms of its proportions I think that uh, head is looking much more in term much more in proportion with the body now that it's bulked up with all that extra armor on there so it's looking pretty good still a little bit plain though again without any panel lining or decals or anything if you guys have any experience doing any extra work like painting these robot damashis or even sanding them i don't know how well they'll take to sanding because the plastic is a little bit different um so if you have any experience working on these 
any more out of the box, like even adding anything to them. Let me know in the comments down below because I'm interested to know about your guys' experiences doing that. I'm interested to do something, I don't know about painting anything, maybe just painting in some small details, panel lining and uh, adding some decals is probably all I'll be interested in doing on this, but let me know you guys' experiences if you have them. So before we get to looking at the rest of the accessories and stuff, let's take a look at this stage here, this uh, Robot Damashi stage version anime. So this is, these are like specifically for this series of Robot Damashi kits. So in here, we have a little advertisement for a premium Bandai version. So I guess this is the version of the stage that comes with these kits, or this will be available on its own. So it says for 5,500 yen, oh, okay, this is the, oh, this is the advertisement for the Zaku Mine Layer that's gonna be coming. So maybe the Zaku Mine Layer is gonna be coming with this specific base. So that's pretty cool. If I really like this, that Zaku Mine Layer would probably be a good combination, but that's gonna be P Bandai. 5,500 yen though is then actually very expensive. It's not too bad. So anyway, there's just an advertisement for these. Again, some more of the MSV version anime figures there. So here we have the Principality of Xeon Force, One Year War, 0079 to 0080 here in red. So yeah, not correct for this kit, but uh, we'll try it. So as it would seem with this, this is like the main arm. This can rotate there. It can bend here and it's ratcheted it seems, so that's nice. And then here at the end as well. I think you could plug the kit directly onto here, just onto that little peg there. But then you do have this extension piece as well if you want to use this. This will extend that and then at the end of here, you this will also rotate and then you have a joint, sorry that's off camera. It will also rotate and then have a another joint on here which will move up and down so it looks like you have a pretty good range of movement here you do also have this piece as well if you want to use this if you have a uh, figure or whatever that is not using this kind of uh, peg for connecting to an action base you can use this one which will just kind of clamp around the middle section of the kit as well if you want to use that right so let's talk about the accessories we with this kit here so this piece is to hold all your hands when not used. So all these extra hands, you've got open hands, actually two different types of open hands. Ones that are kind of like two fingers out and the other ones that are like more open. Or these would be like for weapon support hands, I suppose. Just trigger finger hands, one of which is in use for the full armor there. And then you have like your just kind of closed fists and then you have some regular beam saber holding hands which are just kind of like a little bit angled. And you have this effect part here which is the effect part for the bazooka. So it's just kind of uh, pre-painted there and just kind of clear and pre-painted a little bit to look like smoke. Looks like a really nice effect on that. We of course have our standard RX-782 beam rifle here, a couple of different beam sabers. These two beam saber handles are the ones that are supposed to be uh, in the backpack when you don't have the cannon attached onto the back. And then this longer one, I guess, is just the handheld one. I guess you can choose. If you want to have it holding with both hands and maybe use that longer handle, you have more space to hold that. These two effect parts are for thrusters, so you can use those for thrusters in the feet or on the backpack, and it looks like those are on ball joints, so those can actually move around. But in the manual, it does warn you that those are really delicate, so be really careful when bending those, I suppose. A few connection parts here. This is for connecting the bazooka onto the back skirt. This is the handle for inside the shield. This is for connecting the shield onto the arm. This one is for connecting the beam rifle onto the inside of the shield. Then we've got a bunch of effect parts here in the center, this big swooshing beam saber effect part for just like an action pose. Regular beam saber effect parts, just two straight ones there. One beam effect part for shooting out of the beam rifle, and then this double beam effect part for shooting out of the double beam rifle that's on the full armor there now. Over here we of course have the shield and the bazooka. And then here, some more of the effect parts. So these would be the effect parts for the missiles when not in use. So now, like under the hatches here, if you were to open these up now, here on the knees and then up there on the shoulders as well, inside there's nothing just because it's just a too close a space. But if you want to display those to actually have the missiles inside, you just attach the piece on there like so. And the same goes for the shoulders. But then we have these ones as well, which are again the same kind of smoke effect to make it look like those are actually shooting off of the full armor. And then up here for the Vulcan effect part, you actually just replace the V-fin entirely, which does kind of make sense, so you just pull that off the head. 
and then we'll place this on there to make it look like this has uh, the effect parts of the Vulcans firing, which actually looks really nice as well. So here's just going to be a few looks around the kit and a few different poses using some of the accessories and things like that. And I'll just kind of give you guys my final thoughts on this. There's a lot of stuff in here, so there's really a lot of different posing and things that you could do with this. If you're the kind of person that wants to put... This is another reason why I haven't got one of these kits before, is because they have so many different option parts and things like that on many of them. If you're the kind of person who are just going to put this on your shelf and just kind of admire it and not really ever change the pose or anything, then you're going to have a lot of stuff left over that you paid for that you don't really have any use for. So I mean, it just kind of comes with the kit, so there's nothing really you can do too much about that. But uh, this thing, this is like really, this would be really, really good for, again, if you're really into toy photography, I think, because there's all these different option parts that you can do, you really need to take this outside and do some posing or just do some nice posing and photoshopping of this with using different weapons and effect parts and everything just to really take advantage of this. I think where with a model kit we get our enjoyment probably more so of course out of just the building, the time we spend building it. I think with this though I guess what it must be uh, for maybe some people, maybe a lot of people, is you're getting a lot of enjoyment out of the time spent just doing different poses and things like that. We're using the different accessories and all of that, especially these version anime robot damashi, I've found they come with a lot more effect parts and things like that. This one doesn't actually come with any of the exploding effect parts. Those are sold in other different versions. Different versions have different ex uh, effect parts that can be used with different you know, kits in the line, in the version anime line. So there is a lot of cross compatibility between them. One other nice thing about these is that we have seen some designs come out in the version anime line that haven't actually come out in. Uh, model kit form before, so like the prototype goof and well when I say model kit form I mean like 1 of 44 scale as these are and in like a modern kit not like an old old MSV kit so like the Zaku Mine Layer for example the prototype goof the Desert Zaku things like that those have really old MSV kits so like 80s kits but to have like something really nice that you can really enjoy posing around and just kind of doing some really awesome posing with that can't really do that with those old 80s kits without a heavy, heavy amount of articulation and uh, modification to that. One other thing quickly is that I told you guys wrong before, that smoke effect part I thought was for the bazooka. I kind of forgot that that's actually for the cannon on the backpack, so I think you saw that on there, but I just forgot to tell you guys that correctly, so I just wanted to point that out. And again, it is unfortunate that I got the wrong base, but the base can actually be used for just regular high-grade kits as well, so I'm sure I can find a nice, like, Char's high-grade kit to paint up and use that base with because that'll work out pretty well I suppose so it's not a total loss I can find another use for that it just won't be of too much use for this kit unfortunately for this figure I should say but any pretty much any action base you have will work for this so it's not really a big deal and that's pretty much it as far as my impression of this figure is it's pretty much exactly what I expected to be honest I think I'll enjoy it enough but I don't really feel like I'm gonna want to go out and buy too many more of these or any because I mean it's fun and interesting and I think it'll be kind of fun to just kind of go in and do some detailing in this, kind of similar to like what I enjoy doing with Converge figures, just filling in the panel lines, putting some waterside decals on there, and then uh, just kind of calling it a day on that. That will definitely help improve the look of this, I think, but ultimately I would have liked to enjoy actually building it and fully painting it and everything myself, so the price you pay for what you get is nice, it just depends on what you want. So. For me, not really my thing. I enjoy this, but I won't be buying too many more of these. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you have questions or comments, I'll try to answer those as best as I can, but again, this is something that I don't really have a whole lot of experience with, so hopefully you guys can have uh, some conversations there down in the comments talking about your different experiences with these, and if you have any experience doing any painting or anything on these as well, let us know. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully that was interesting, informative, and something different at least, so... Hope you're having a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>